You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own theremin. For this circuit, we're going to be using one very similar to the one we last used. As you can see, the changes are as follows. This 100 nanofarad capacitor, and a photoresistor just like this. The photoresistor is going to be in parallel with the 20,000 ohm potentiometer. If you haven't yet, first watch the How to Make a Frequency Generator video I up on my channel. That video will go through how we built this main circuit here. A theremin actually operates by using human capacitance, however, for someone who's beginning out in electronics, that'll be much more difficult to do than this pseudo-theremin, which uses light rather than human capacitance. And the photoresistor is going to be the thing that changes the tune. By moving your hand closer and further away, you're blocking out light, changing the resistivity of the photoresistor. As for this capacitor that we changed out for the 4.7 microfarad capacitor in the last one, that capacitor affects the overall tune. If I have something with a smaller capacitance here, the pitch will overall will be higher. If I have something with a higher capacitance, the pitch will be lower. Alright, so I have the speaker set up, let's go ahead and turn it on. As I move my hand closer to the photoresistor, the tune will get lower. But you can still tune it slightly with this potentiometer, as you can see. Here I have that 4.7 microfarad capacitor, and now that we've swapped out the old one, let's go ahead and turn it on and see the pitch we get. As you can hear right away, it's much lower. This principle will hold true for any capacitance we test. The smaller the capacitance, the higher the pitch. The higher the capacitance, the lower the pitch. There are things that are actually called variable capacitors. I don't have one, but I really wish I did, because if I did, it would be really easy to tune which pitch I wanted to be using at a specific time. I think I like the pitch of the 0.1 microfarad capacitor best, so we'll be using that. I think I'm going to want to make this permanent, so I'm going to give this a more professional look, and I'm going to be right back with you. Alright, so now I'm going to run through all the things I did to this. First off, I put down this indicator light here, so I'd be able to tell when it's on. As you can see here, I have this switch. Why I have that switch is because I'm, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to encase it in a project box and have this brown wire run to a speaker. The black is the common ground, and this red wire is going to run to an auxiliary cord. So right now it's set to the auxiliary cord, but if I change it, it goes to speaker. And then the third switch, since this is a three option switch, I may have an LED blinking thing. What I did to get this circuit board was I took an old gift card and I poked some holes in it using this pin here. It worked out pretty well and I got all the soldering connections down. As you can see, we still have the tuner right here. I ordered out a few 8-pin sockets to put the 555 timer chip in. That way, if it does burn out from someone putting in too much voltage, it'll be really easy to replace because I can just pop it out and place a new one in without having to desolder anything. It's important to note I'm running this at 6 volts DC. Any higher and your 555 timer chip will begin to burn up. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave it a thumbs up. If you'd like to get our weekly videos inside your video feed, go and hit the subscribe button below. If you have anything you want to learn how to make, go ahead and leave a comment below saying what you would like to see on the channel next. Be safe and have a wonderful day.